Okay, I hope everyone can hear me fine. So today I'm going to talk about Titara. Uh, fir first, I need to thank you to wake up early to be there, and I'll try to, to keep you awake as myself. Um, okay, so I'm a software developer at Development Seed. Uh, some people call me Cogsdar. I'm more like a, yeah, I'm a Cog passionate and uh, mostly a JPEG 2000 hater. And, uh, but yeah, I'm a self-taught uh, Python developer, uh, but I had great mentors during my career, such as Sean Gillis and Matthew Perry, for example. Some people might know me because I created a website a couple years ago called Remote Pixel, where I try to easily access to Earth observation data as Landsat and Sentinel-2, for example. I'm a geologist. I've got a master uh, degree in Earth science. I just put that to show that you can become a software developer a software engineer, even if your background is whatever. Um, and uh, when I'm not coding uh, or like spending time with my family, I usually bike or get coffee. So if you want to ride uh, during the Fianze Force 4 like, hit me up. I'm always up for a bike ride. So I'm going to talk about what is Titara, uh, why it exists, and how uh, to use it. Um, and uh, first, Titaya is an open source uh, project. It's hosted on, on GitHub, and uh, we welcome any contributors. So feel free to uh, check out uh, the repo and uh, open issue if you have any problems and or open uh, comments, uh, a discussion if you need more help. So um, Titaya is a Python. It's a set of Python modules, uh, um, and it's mostly based on uh, a su suite of uh, other modules uh, like T-Tiler, like Rio Tyler, Mercantile, uh, all based on Rasterio or GDAO, uh, like which is based on GDAO, and uh, we also use PyProj. Um, it's uh, we are using uh, so T-Tiler helps you create uh, APIs. Uh, so we built T-Tiler using Fast API, which is uh, like a new state of the art um, framework to build uh, Python APIs, uh, and so it's really nice and uh, it's a uh, production ready uh, because yeah fast API is great so as I say it's a TTR is a production ready uh, module uh, we use it in a couple of projects already and it's also used like in the planetary computer for example so just to let you know that it's pretty performant um, we support mostly cl club team Azure, but uh, like all raster supported by GDO. Uh, we also support uh, stack uh, items. Uh, we can create tiles in different uh, projections. We support like multiple output format if you want to display PNG or JPEG on your map or like, uh, like even like support NumPy, NumPy tile, NumPy tile uh, to play with the data directly. Um, there is OGC WMTS support, uh, full open API documentation uh, thanks to fast API. Uh, we also uh, have a support for mosaics uh, via mosaic JSON specification. And uh, we try to make a TTR in a way that you can extend and customize it uh, as much as you can, uh, as much as you want, sorry. So yeah, TTR is, is a project that helps you make tiles to display on the map. And uh, tiles, when we talk about raster, uh, it's uh, like a JPEG or PNG files that uh, you uh, display on the map. They usually uh, size like 256 by 256. So yeah, small um, small uh, image that you want to put on the map. Usually, you create those like uh, you pre-create those uh, and you store them on uh, object storage like S3. So. What you do is uh, you have a nice raster that you want to display on the map. You create all the tiles in advance, and then you use a, a server or like a, a CDN to, st to, to, uh, to serve those images uh, to your map clients. So you do all the processing, the reprojection, rescaling, the math, uh, apply some math algorithm to the image, uh, cut all those tiles, put them in the storage, uh, for different zoom levels. So you end up with millions of uh, static files that you will then uh, serve to, the, to your web clients. And when we talk about dynamic for uh, tiling for, uh, that we do with Titler, we, we only store the, the raw data, so your uh, cloud image for example, 
and there is nothing in the middle. There is just a server. There is no more files. And so every time the, the web client will request a map tiles, we will read the, the, the original TIFF. We will apply the, the, all the processing steps, so reprojection, rescaling, meta algorithm, and serve the tile. We can put a, a cache in the middle, so it's fast for the second tile request. But like, there, yeah, there is no more like tiles to store uh, yeah, on, on, on the object storage. So it's a bit slower, but then it opens like an infinite uh, option, uh, possibilities like in terms of rendering. Um, so you can, for example, change the rescaling factor. Like, uh, for example, this is an elevation data. So there is a different, you can, yeah. D apply different um, color maps, different rescaling factors. And so you can do that on the fly. So every time we change the, 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 the options, we re regenerate the tiles. And uh, same for, for example, if you want to choose like the band combination of your data. If your data has more than one band, you might want to change the, the band combination. Like you put the first band at the, uh, like the band one at the, uh, at the third position or wh whatever. So you can do that when using t dynamic tiling. You can, add a, uh, sorry, you can also like want to mosaic files. Like if you have two uh, or more like cloud optimizative, you want to create um, tile output tiles that will merge the, the the files together. But you you can also, for example, choose the one to choose which pixel goes on the top of your tile. Like if you want the oldest pixel to be on the top, if you want the uh, like darkest or like the brightest pixel, you can do that uh, when doing uh, dynamic tiling. You can choose like a lot of parameters, and like we will just create the tile on the fly. So if you think about like static tiling, like you will have to generate like tons of millions of tiles if you want to support all this kind of operation. But with dynamic tiling, it's everything is almost possible. So and you can do also nice like nice things like like you can translate every pixel to vector tiles if you want. Like there is a, like like I say almost an infinite possibilities of options that you can do with dynamic tiling. And you can also like do fusion, like if you have multiple files, that, uh, like not in terms of mosaics, but like in terms of bands, like for example the Sentinel or the Landsat data, they are stored in multiple files. So, so you might want to to merge those files first to to create a RGB combination. So for this this, this example is using uh, stack items. So. We read the stack items, uh, uh, um, JSONs, and we see that there, there are multiple assets, and we merge the assets uh, uh, dynamically, and we let the user yeah, choose which assets uh, to, to merge. Um, one important thing about T-Tyler, um, it's a Python module. Okay, it's a suite of Python module. So um, the, the thing I usually say is don't fork it, like just in, install it and import it. Uh, and then you can extend it uh, using your own Python code. Uh, so there, there are multiple um, T-Tyler modules. That, so there is the core, which has all of the building blocks for the, uh, building your API. We have T-Tyler Mosaic, which uh, adds support for mosaics. Uh, we have the T-Tyler application, which is like the demo application that has like support for cloud optimizative, support for stack, and support for mosaics. And which is like production ready. You can just you do pip install a T-Tyler application, and you can almost uh, launch your own server uh, that with all the features uh, that uh, that you that you need. And there is uh, another one called T-Tyler PG Stack, which is uh, linking the PG Stack database, so the st the stack metadata database, and to create dynamic mosaics directly from that. So. Uh, this is just an example of like a really small like Python code that will create like a full raster services uh, from T-Tyler. So we use something called Tyler factories uh, within T-Tyler, which helps uh, the help Python class that helps build and register endpoints to your fast API application. So like it's like six or seven, seven lines of Python code that will create like a full list of uh, endpoints, and then you have like support for map tiles, so which I described earlier. You have support for pre 
previewing your data set, uh, to uh, cropping your data set using bounding box or GeoJSON features. You uh, can access the pixel values, uh, so there is a point endpoint, and then some metadata endpoints like bounds, uh, info, statistics, and uh, also the WNTS OGC um, uh, endpoints. One thing, as I described before, one thing uh, important is you can change like the band selection. You can choose the band selection. You can like apply band math expression like NDVI or whatever. Um, you can choose any color maps uh, that uh, come from Matpl Matplotlib and also uh, build your own custom color maps. You can apply linear rescaling uh, or like color formulas uh, to uh, to like play with the the, the like color correction of, of your data. So, so bef before showing more tiles and more images, uh, so the, the metadata endpoints are really great just to understand what's, what's your data. So you get to know how many bands the data your cloud optimizative has, like what data type is it, it is, so you can understand what kind of options you can have then uh, if you need to rescale your data, if you need, if you need to allow more band combinations. So this is like the basic uh, basic info about your your image, and the statistic endpoints give you like the min and max values of your data, the like uh, histogram of your data. So you, you have an understanding, a, a more more deep understanding of your data, and uh, so and again you can choose which band you want, the which statistics. Uh, which band statistics you want, you can like uh, use expressions. Uh, for example, this is the NDVI histo histogram of this data. So uh, you can like again, uh, most of the endpoints supports like band selection and uh, band expression. So the, this is the point uh, endpoint results. Uh, so again, you get all the pixel values for all the, the pixel value for all the bands. You can select the bands. You can apply band expression if you need. So this is the result for, this is an example of the preview uh, endpoint. So again, band selection, uh, band expression, you can do whatever you want. The crop endpoint um, example, so you post a GeoJSON feature, or you can also, as I said before, use a bounding box uh, directly in the URL path and to create like, yeah, small images uh, for your GeoJSON feature. So again, uh, don't fork it, import it, customize it. Uh, if you want, you can exclude some endpoints. If, if you want just the tile endpoints, you can like uh, yeah, put it in your own application. If you already have like a, a fast API application with other endpoints, you can just register uh, the other endpoints that you want. Um, the, the, as I explained before, the TTLR application uh, Python module has support for Cog, Stack, and Mosaic JSONs by default. Uh, so, which is the one that uh, is used in TTLR that is XYZ um, demo endpoint. Uh, so, you can already play with it if you want uh, using this URL. Um, and so, some example of custom applications. So, there is the TTLR PG stack which connects to the PG stack database to create uh, dynamic mosaics using stack items. Um, so when I was talking about uh, vector data, creating vector data from pixels, uh, from pixel value, you can check out the TTR MVT uh, project uh, on development seed repo, which will read the raster data and create like vector tile from it. Um, there are other projects like TTR Digital Twin, TTR PDS, or, or Reovis, that use TTR and customize it uh, for their own uh, goal. So. Next on uh, on Rio Tire of on um, T Tire, so the next development will be mostly on the low level, like on the low level uh, modules like Rio Tire. So we are going to make it more sp more, sp more more fast uh, and fa faster. And so yeah, we are going to work on that in the next months because we know like that sometimes sometimes it can be really slow. So so on like w when I say really slow, it's like almost one second, so for tile creation, it's, it's still okay. Uh, we want to enable a complex post-processing, so if you want, if, you, you, if the user comes with a complex uh, script to run on the tile or to run on the, on the image, on the output, output image, we will enable that uh, in T-Tiler. 
so that's coming in the next uh, few months. We want to focus on customization, so to ease the user to do whatever it wants uh, with t uh, classes. Um, we need to work on the documentation so it is the access uh, to anyone. Um, and we also are going to add uh, ZAR support because this is something that uh, has been requested by a lot of users. Uh, ZAR is already supported in GDAL, so technically you can use um, rest, uh, you can use t -Tyler with ZAR data already, but uh, there is a tricky uh, situation uh, about ZAR, when there are more than two dimensions, uh, we need to read the sub data set of the uh, ZAR data, which is uh, it's a bit complex directly uh, right now in t -Tyler, but uh, we hope to use uh, to, to ease the access to ZAR data with t uh, soon. And we also want to add like non-geographic data uh, as uh, I talk, uh, talk uh, like th there was a talk yesterday about uh, like oblique imagery, uh, non-geotif uh, data yesterday, and so we hope to add the uh, uh, like non-geo data support in Titara uh, pretty soon. Uh, just on, on the bottom, it's like example of custom uh, script that you can you could apply, for example, on your data if you want to create a hill shade or like contour uh, detection on your data. Yeah, so just to summarize uh, a bit, uh, t is the Python module. So yeah, you don't, again, you don't need to fork it. You can just install it and like play and go from that. It makes tiles from Cloud Optimizative, but you can have more than tiles. You can have preview, crop, point, metadata. You can, and you can, and you should customize it and extend it. It's production ready uh, using Fast API. It supports mosaics and stack. And uh, again, it's open source, and we welcome contributors. Uh, so feel free, yeah, again, to drop by the repo, and uh, or to, to the, the the low level modules like Rio Tyler or Mercantile, if you have issue or question. Um, so T Tyler is part of like a, a family of three projects at Development Seed that we work on. Uh, so they, there is T Tyler for the raster services. There is TMVT, which is like. Um, a vector tile, a dynamic vector tile generation from PoGS, and uh, we just released T features, which is a OGC features API. Um, all those three projects are using Fast API, uh, using the same style of uh, coding. So if you have uh, checked T Tyler, uh, there is no like difference, really big difference between those three projects. And uh, the thing is, you can create like one application with all those three projects together uh, if you want to have like a, a set of endpoints that support raster uh, features and uh, vector, for example. So it's, it's pretty fun. Uh, all right, written in Python and uh, using Fast API. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, it. And uh, if you have more questions and, and want to check out uh, the, uh, the job at Development Seed, you can. And yeah, and feel free to, uh, to reach out if you have more questions, uh, either on Twitter or on, on GitHub. Um, and yeah, that's it. Oh, one more. We have uh, a conference. We are hosting a conference in Washington, end of September, about uh, mostly about satellite data. Uh, you can talk to Bruno about it. Uh, you will be there, I guess. And so, um, so yeah, it's a great conference. Uh, if you are in Washington, end of the September, you can also submit uh, lightning talks uh, up to uh, early September. So feel free to check out uh, this conference. And yeah, oh yeah, I promised more gift in my in <laughs> in my keynote, sir. So yeah, that's all the gift I could find.